Hello, welcome to the Jocelyn Gould Show. This is episode seven. If you're enjoying the show, we're so glad to have you here and we would love if you would hit the subscribe button so that you can find us every time. It really helps us um, keep things going. We are going to get started today with a tune called Sweet Lorraine. You're listening to Kevin Waters on the drums. This is Devin Gillingham on the bass. And this is Will Vonis on the piano. My name's Jocelyn Gould and... This is Sweet Lorraine. Mm, mm, mm. I just found joy. I'm as happy as a baby boy with another brand new choo choo toy. When I met my sweet Lorraine. She's got a pair of eyes that are brighter than the summer skies. When you see them, you will realize why I love my sweet Lorraine. Now, when it's raining, I don't miss the sun, cause it's in my baby's smile. And to think that I I can't wait until that lucky day when I marry sweet Lorraine.
I'm as happy as a baby boy With another brand new choo-choo toy When I met my sweet Lorraine She's got a pair of eyes That are brighter than the summer skies When you see them you will realize Why I love my sweet Lorraine That was Sweet Lorraine. Um, this is episode seven. We are, um, we are really happy to be here. Happy that you're joining us. And we're going to do play a few tunes. And we are going to answer some questions. So let's do a question segment. Everybody sent in such great questions as usual. So here we go. All right. Paris Pope asks, where is your favorite place to have brunch? Paris. <laughs> Paris <laughs> is a friend of mine. Shout out to Paris. Um, Just anywhere or? Yeah, I guess anywhere. Locally favorite brunch or? Spot. So my favorite place to have brunch is in Toronto. Um, it's this place called Insomnia. And I only say it because my friend Joanna and I have gone for brunch there about 50 times. <laughs> and so it's just the place that I have had the most, the most brunches at, I think. So that's what I would say. I've had brunch in, at a place in Winnipeg called The Nook about 100 times. Mm. This is a diner. It's good. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Great diner. It's probably yeah. my go-to spot. Wow. Kevin? I don't really know any. You don't brunch, have brunch. brunch <laughs> I don't really know Kevin doesn't need brunch. <laughs> I've had so so much brunch. <laughs> so many brunches. I can't even count. No, I, I, don't, I don't care about brunch. It's a great question, though. <laughs> All right. Um, Nate Boss Ross asks, "How do you recommend learning chords from ear? Learning mm. chords by ear." Yeah. That's a great question. I guess I guess this person means like listening to a recording and figuring out what the chords are, probably. Yeah, yeah. that's a great question. Um, thank you for asking that. So for me, when I'm trying to learn a new tune and, or I'm trying to figure out some new new chords that I'm not familiar with or a new chord progression, the first thing that I always do is listen for the the root movement. So what is the bass player playing is the first thing that I'll listen to. They're often playing the root of the chord. And that I think is the first kind of mystery is what what is the root movement? What are the are the root notes of these chords? So I'll just listen over and over again until I can hear what the bass player is doing. And I do that a lot with students. We'll spend, you know, sometimes an entire lesson just trying to learn the chord changes from, um, from, a, from a recording. And it always starts with, okay, what's the root movement? What is the bass player playing? Um, from there, once you have the root movement, you can then move on to what is the quality of the chord? Is it major, minor, dominant? Etc. Um, and so for that, you're listening to the third and the seventh, trying to piece together, um, is this a major chord? 
and what kind of seventh seventh does it have or is it a minor chord and what kind of seventh does it have so for example um, if this is my chord don't look guitar players because you'll just know what it is if that's my chord I'll be listening for the root movement so I'll listen to it a bunch of times and try to hear the root which isn't necessarily the bass note of a voicing it happens to be in uh, this particular voicing um, the bass note is the lowest note of a voicing but um, not necessarily the root of the chord so I'll just sing it until I hear it try and figure out what the bass player is playing so eventually uh, with this voicing I will land on the as my root and then I'm listening for the third and seventh is this major or is this minor so eventually uh, through listening and trying to pick out okay so let's try minor so a minor third would sound like da. can you hear that in this chord da. it's not in there how about a major third da. you can hear it you can, uh, it's right top note of this particular voicing Okay, so you have the root and the third. Let's listen for the seventh. So uh, a flat seven would be da or da. That would make it dominant. Is there a flat seven in here? Da. It clashes. That's not what the seventh is. Okay, let's try a major seven. Da. Does that fit in here? Da. It does. It happens to be the, the second voice down in this voicing. Okay, so we've got the root, which was C, and a major third and a major seven. So we have a C, C major seven chord. It's that slow, and you have to do that with every single chord of a chord progression in order to to figure out what they are. And it's really just through the process of trying, um, trying to hear the quality of chord progressions that you can't hear yet and slowing them down and working really hard to try and hear. Da, 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 trying to hear these individual notes and chords. So my advice to somebody is to do their best to figure out a chord progression by themselves, do everything that they can, and then take it to somebody who might know or somebody who might have you know, better ears than you who can hear the chord progression. And they'll be able to kind of fix your work and tell you where things were a little bit different. And then go back and listen to what, what they're saying or what, what uh, was corrected and try to hear it, maybe a teacher or, or maybe a pianist. Pianists tend to know a lot about chord voicings because they play a lot of chord voicings. Um, so by this process of just trying to hear things that you can't quite hear yet, that's how your ear will improve. That's how you'll make it grow. And one day you'll hear this and you'll just hear a major seven chord. It won't be kind of this mystery and you can't necessarily see those incremental that incremental growth um, over as you're doing it but one day you'll you'll realize that things are just you're able to hear maybe jazz standards a lot quicker you're able to figure things out by ear a lot quicker um, so that's that's how I teach learning chord progressions by ear is just through isolating the chord tones and figuring them out one by one any yeah. advice i mean pretty much the same i would do the fifth too probably because like okay. it, it could have an altered um, fifth potentially so yeah. check the check the fifth yes so like this voicing we were working on hear that perfect fifth you can hear that perfect fifth but what if it were this this is all a voice this changes one note do, do. yeah it's very different sound right 
So the fifth also can. Um, yeah, I mean, I kind of just go like root, try to hear the root, then try to hear the third, and I just go up fifth, seventh. And then as you get more advanced, you can try to hear what kind of ninth, if there is a ninth in it, 11th and 13th. Yeah, as you yeah. get, you know, you don't really need that at first, but. Yeah. And also just practicing those chords on your instrument, like in every key, you just get to know what they sound like. So like you'll just be able to know what a dominant seventh chord sounds like because you've practiced it so much. So all that kind of together, you'll get you'll get there. And for single note instruments, you can arpeggiate yeah, all, arpeggiate. Of, these, yeah. all of these chord well, qualities. Or practice them on piano as well. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. Thanks for the question. Great question. Yeah. Um, Danny Deal on guitar asks, how did you start your career? Hmm. How did I start my career? Thanks for the question, Danny. Um, I started, I started my career here in Winnipeg playing with, with, um, with my friends here and probably Kevin was pretty early on. Yeah. 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 I met Kevin in 2013, 2013, 2014. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I, my career started, um, I was in a bunch of bands and we played every night in Winnipeg. And when we weren't playing, we were rehearsing. We would often have rehearsals that would start at like 10 p.m. So if we didn't have a gig, we would just replace the gig with a rehearsal and write music and and practice. And um, yeah, I, I owe an immeasurable amount to my friends here at home for um you know giving me the space to learn and learning with me and um yeah that's that's how my career started yeah cool how did everybody else's career start mm, same. <laughs> you know? same. local same. gigs yeah playing local gigs and yeah. gradually getting to know people on the scene and kind of building from there yeah music the music the global music community is actually quite small so yeah. it starts in your own hometown community yeah for sure yeah yeah you want to play some more let's play some more all right we are going to play a tune that i love really love um this is a beautiful song called more than you know. It has a really beautiful verse that I will play. You're not going to do Bye Bye Blackbird? Oh, I forgot. Sorry. I got excited about this one. <laughs> We're going to play <laughs> We're going to play a tune called Bye Bye Blackbird.
Great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I enjoyed that. Our favorite words. <laughs> um, here we go. Questions we go. number two. <laughs> oh, yeah. Questions <laughs> round two. Here's a good one. Incremental Gains asks, what is the best way wow. fans can support jazz artists such as yourself? Ooh, that is a good question. Best way what? Best way fans can fans, support uh, jazz artists such as yourself. Go see shows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Keep uh -huh. seeing shows and pay for the music if you can, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Uh, I love this question. Thank you so much, Incremental Gains. Um, for the question, um, it is super confusing, I think, w these days of how, just how to, you know, support the artists that you really love. So, I mean, I can speak for my, my own, my own kind of where I'm at as an independent an independent artist so I you know I'm a, a team of, of one I do all my own everything um, from managing to uh, booking my tours to practicing writing um, if you write me and I write you back that's that email is coming from me so for for independent artists um, the best way to support them if you're looking to, to, to support is by purchasing something directly from the artist. So from their websites, for example, is the best way because that way you know that what you're, the, what you're buying is going directly to the artist and coming directly from the artist. And it's the same way with listening to artists' music. So um, streaming, streaming platforms aren't, I mean, I think everybody knows at this point that artists are not paid fairly for um, on streaming platforms. And so the best way to support a musician's music is to purchase their music directly from them on their website through either physical copies or, or purchase, you know, download copies. Anything from the artist, you can feel assured that they're um, receiving your support, which I think is, you know, first of all, just really encouraging and helps artists know that they're on the right path. And second of all, helps them to continue doing what they're doing. It's by, it's from your support that, that we're able to do, do what we're doing. Yeah. That's a good answer. Think about how many layers are between your support and the artist. Like if you go to a show, you know, you're directly like there, you're seeing them, you're paying to see the show. If you buy, buy something straight from them, you know, like if you're streaming, it's like going through a big company and hopefully something gets through to the artist eventually. But, you know, there's like the, the fewer layers there are between you and the artist, like the more you're directly supporting them. It's kind of one way to think about it. Ah. So, yeah. yes. Yes. Thank you for the question. These are, I think, really important uh, subjects that that people want to know about. So thank you. Yeah. Um, William Levin asks, good name, William. Um, <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. Um, Decent. What single piece of advice would you offer to any guitarist of any skill level and having any kind of musical preference? Can you read that again? What single piece of advice would you offer to any guitarist of any skill level and having any kind of musical preference? It's, so as general of a piece of advice as possible. <laughs> one, piece, records. one single piece. One piece. Yeah, no listen matter. to records. Yeah. No, that's good. <laughs> Do listen. you want to speak on that no, a little? No, 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 no. Yeah. That's all I got. Yeah. That's yeah. good. Yeah, that pretty much applies to everyone in every genre, every instrument. Actively listening. No matter what level you're at, that's just always good advice 
Yeah, actively listening. Yeah, that was surprisingly easy. Listen to, yeah, <laughs> thank you, Kevin. <laughs> I was like, oh, what it's am I? It's my only advice. It's the one I always got. Yeah. Yep. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Great. Um, tips, uh, Jesus 9, tips for transcribing and applying. Emphasis on applying. So how do you transcribe things and then apply them, I guess? Any tips? Mm, my biggest tip for transcribing that I see students often not doing or not, you know, people who are trying to learn jazz language not doing is um, first of all, doing a full transcription, doing a transcription and then sep splitting it up into bite size pieces, into phrases, um, maybe a 251 or a 1625, into little shorter phrases, maybe two bars or four bars, and then taking those phrases through 12 keys. Um, if you learn an entire transcription, let's say you learn a two minute transcription by Hank Mobley, but you never do this, you never take little lines, shorter lines, shorter little excerpts from the transcription and take them through 12 keys, then you're never gonna be able to separate, to take anything, it's a lot harder than to take anything out of a two minute transcription and have it start coming out in your playing. So I would say dissect your transcriptions, analyze them har harmonically, and then take phrases through 12 keys. From there, once you know a phrase in 12 keys from a solo, you start to impose it, you start to force it into your solos on other tunes um, where it fits, where that chord progression comes up or where it will fit. And you do this intentionally quite a bit, and it might feel like um, you know, you're really plugging things in because you are, but eventually that becomes a part of your own kind of inner language dialogue. The same way you would with a, a word of a language that you speak. Um, so for me, if I learn a new word, Will was explaining to me today how to use the word whom. <laughs> <laughs> whom versus who. And I probably am not going to try and start using that word, but um, if I were, I would have to intentionally start using the word, <laughs> which I won't, but if I were to, um, I would have to be intentional about fitting this new word into my um, vocabulary. So it's really just through intentionally fitting lines in to your playing that they'll become a part of your uh, fluid language. Anybody else? No, uh, but pretty much the same. Yeah. I mean, I don't think I don't think that I don't think there's actually a bunch of different paths to do this thing that we all are trying to do. It's really just sitting there and like just staring at it, taking it to the smallest pieces. You know, you have to be be serious about like I don't know, like you either can do it or you can't. That's kind of it. And the the smaller you can break it down, it makes it a little more manageable. Like for myself, I got like I, I got that attention span. Like and I can't really sit and just do a whole lot of shit at once. Like at one time, I just I cannot do that like at all. So it's always small things that turn into bigger things over time. You know? like yeah, that's yeah. the better way to do it. Yeah. What do like a smaller things look like for drummers? Oh, it's the same kind of thing. Like if there's like a say if you're trying to transcribe like a solo or something, I'm not about to sit here about to try to do the whole thing at one time. You know, I'll take like eight bars at a time or something. You know, and then over time, maybe it turns into like more of the solo. But really, it's like taking the little piece, taking like the little pieces that you can out of it that resonate a lot, you know, and that kind of makes sense. And they become functional over time because you learn like why it was played. And like, I don't know, trying to play melodies with the little pieces of the rhythm that you get from drum solos, you know, build over time. But yeah, my, it's always been small into something bigger, like for myself, anyway. Cool. Me too. I'm the same way. Yeah. 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 Anything from Devin? I don't think I'm going to add anything better than that. So, uh. cool. <laughs> You'd be surprised. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Got one more question? Let's do it. All right. Alice Francisco asks, what is your opinion about Emily Remler? Oh, Emily Remler was a, an incredible guitar player and um, probably not spoken enough about, um, but she really is, you know, I think one of, one of the great guitar players of jazz history. I don't, yeah, that's, that's it. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Simple. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Wanna do one more tune? Absolutely. Let's play another tune. We have lots of simple answers to things today. Yeah, we're uh, we're, we're getting better at it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not like, oh, Kinda, what is it? What is... <laughs> Although I often get home and I'm like, oh, I should have said this and mm -hmm. this and this. <laughs> All right, we are gonna wrap up today with a tune. Um, a really, really beautiful tune. This is a tune called More Than You Know.
That was more than you know. Once again, you have been listening today to the great Kevin Waters on the drums, the great Devin Gillingham on the bass, and the great Will Vonis on the piano. My name is Jocelyn Gould. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you're interested, if you look just below the YouTube video, you'll see a link to my store. I've got two CDs. I've got some t-shirts. I would love, love, love to sign something and send it your way. Please subscribe to the channel. We will see you next time. Take care. Thank you for watching.